Mm-hmm. Cool. Welcome, welcome everybody, and uh, thank you for joining me on another edition of uh, the Bread for Soul Convos with myself, Sir LSG. And um, yeah, on the other end of the line, I've got one of my favorite human beings to meet up with. Um, <laughs> Rocco, how are you, my brother? I'm good, I'm good, you know. Uh, we are locked down still a little bit, uh, but uh, it's summertime in my site in France, so you can see. Yes, like you. Like I'm cool. You. <laughs> so everything is fine so far. Everything is, I can't complain, you know, I yeah. can't complain. Good, good, man. Um, I mean, uh, you have been a legendary figure, you know, for me and for uh, for many other people as a as a producer, you know, the stuff that you've done in the past, you know, um, I can't even the, the hits that you've produced. They are countless, <laughs> you know, not many people will have, you know, the kind of catalog that you've had in the past, you know, like set them free, bring yeah. on the night all this love for you the jack house connection thing hard time for lovers there's so many so many you know like um yeah i'm so honored to 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 be chatting to you and people don't know this that we me and you actually had a chat uh two years ago on a similar concept oh. that i was trying out at the hit refresh studios and uh, i'm so happy that you agreed to do this with me so thank you yeah of, of course it's a pleasure for me and uh yes uh, I, I'm lucky, I think, uh, for the the long uh, exchange, uh, not exchange, the love and support from South Africa, mm-hmm. and of course the rest of the world for my music. And uh, it's, but it's true that especially in South Africa, uh, my through my music, I was lucky to have some hit there. It mm-hmm. was a home for for my music. Yeah, it's a home for my music. <laughs> it, it is, it is. I mean, like um, you, you are one of the people who um, visit us regularly here for gigs, and I yes. think that I am grateful for that because, um, like I say, firstly, not so many people have had so many hits, you know, in in South Africa, and uh, and secondly, we are like for me, we are blessed as a as a country. Yes we've got a scene that is big that is buzzing with house music but it's like hip-hop people if you think about hip-hop if hip-hop people were to visit if jay-z was to visit south africa you know a lot of times it would be nice right like and that's what we've had along the years we've had superstars you know like for our house music you guys are our own superstars you know um just for the music that you made so I'm very glad, and we will talk about essay um, a bit later as we go on. But I want to ask you yeah. about your own early memories of music. Sorry, uh, I mean, no pun intended, but like your own early, early memories of music. You mean? Uh, uh, you mean? You mean? You mean? Like growing up. So, so when you when you were on when you were growing up and listening okay, to music okay, and, uh, as okay, a okay. as a young person um as a kid <laughs> as, a, as, as a kid yeah as a kid what were you listening yeah, to yeah you so you know uh so as people know don't know i'm from france from uh from Lyon city and i grew up in suburban so and uh i'm uh, the last before of 10 kids in our house and uh, my older brother was a dj on the 80s mm-hmm. so when i was uh, 12 or 13 years old my brother was doing mostly a block party you know and uh, so of course every day in the house music was playing and uh, even many many friends of my big brother uh, they were passing by the house drinking coffee almost every day around five five o'clock playing music with guitar listening vinyl so i grew up with music like james brown um uh let's say uh, funky music like cool and the gang first release of madonna produced by jelly bean benitez for example yes. and uh, of course also uh, music like santana it's a more uh pop rock and roll music and uh, rolling stone 
it was a melting pot of different genres of uh, of music and even some uh, French uh, French uh, artists. So my um, my culture and music is let's say it's mainly funky. Oh, sorry, I have uh, uh, something on my screen. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, let's say I grew up with funky music with. Uh, so, with soul music, Aretha Franklin, uh, like I say, uh, there is so many uh, James Brown, and later on, uh, I listen a, a lot of uh, Italian uh, funky producer and uh, American uh, producer. Yeah, and and um, so with regards to house music, what are who are some of the people that um, pulled you in? You know, with regards to wanting to be. A producer like who were you listening to um house music producers okay. um when i was let's say 16 16 years old uh there was a a guy in paris who was running a radio show every weekend and uh he was working with some uh vinyl shop so every week he was broadcasting on the on the national radio uh a radio show called Skydance, and uh, every week I was uh, recording. Um, I was recording some tape. Okay, nice. yeah. people want to see. Yeah. Also a tape from New York and Soul from Japan. Nice. Which later on the tape become became more digital, uh, like this. This yes. is digital audio tape, okay? Yeah. Anyway, so every weekend I was recording Skydance on, on, in my room, in my, yes, in my room. And um, this guy uh, was Dimitri from Paris. And uh, I can say that uh, Dimitri from Paris, as a DJ and a selector, inspired me a lot uh, on the way of... Uh, on the way he was mixing the music and uh, also because uh, he introduced us a lot of house producers like Frankie Knuckles, David Morales, uh, Roger Sanchez. Um, there is so many, there is so many. Mm. And, and uh, uh, Steve Silkerley. This, we are talking about late 80s, 88, mm. 89. Mm. So, I'm pretty sure, and I'm sure that because of him, I wanted to to start DJing and playing house music. But that music was garage music. It was uh, it was uh, a, a mix between R and B I think our network is uh, is a bit slow. The connect that kind of stuff. down tempo music, you know. Yeah. Is it better? Yeah, it's better now. It's better now. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry. No, worries. yeah. Okay. So, so we did you lose something when I was explaining or not? Uh, you you were getting to down tempo, a mixture of R and B, uh, and that's when it started getting slow. Yes, yeah, so it was a mix between R and B and house music with stuff like uh, Adeva, Adeva, for example. Yes. Uh, on cool tempo record, there is so many good stuff. Mm. So yes, I I want to say mainly because of of his radio show, mm. I felt in love with house music. Mm. And then... Um, Which was dance. <laughs> yeah, sure. And, and, and what about like, um, did you, were you already producing your own stuff when you teamed up with, with Manu for, for Rodamal? In that time? No, no, um, uh, la later, like, so, so when, when you and Manu got together, by that time, okay. um, had you already started your own your own journey as a as a producer? No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> uh, 
I started to DJ uh, something around uh, 91. Night, uh, even earlier, because I was doing uh, mobile mobile uh, session, you know, birthday, weddings. Yes. I was playing different different kind of music everywhere. And then in 91, 92, I start to play, uh, I start to J DJ uh, more in a club or even uh, some uh, parties. Um, so Manu and myself, we met in 90, let's say 94, in a club uh, at Lamb a club called L'Ambassade in Lyon. Mm. It was the only place you can hear house music and garage music from New York style because all the rest of the city were playing dance music or techno music. And it's how we met there. And also, I was also a sailor in a vinyl shop. So I was selling uh, music in a, in a shop. And uh, every week, I had the visit of different DJ from all my city. So we met the first time like this. And then we shared the residency at L'Ambassade. He was playing on Friday. I was playing on Saturday. Beside all other gigs I have all around the city. And uh, we really we started our first uh, production uh, with uh, three other friends with a project called uh, Sir James. We only release uh, one track on the compilation via Universal on a compilation uh, called uh, Private Lounge. It was in 1999. So this is the first time we start uh, to produce together in 1999. Mm. So this is the first time, the first collaboration with Manu. And later, uh, two or three years later, we start to, we did Roda, we, we start that project Roda Mal, And we did uh, uh, our first collaboration with Alex Santos, who lives in Portugal. In 2001, uh, we did Love Island. And uh, um, I mean, like you also went to do the the smash it with a buzz and fly. That was um, Musica Feliz, I think. Um, yes. Um, but like, uh, so how did the the reception for you come? Like when when that song was so big, or did you know that Musica Feliz was big? Let me start by there. No, you. Um, I mean, first we did Love Island. Because we produced Love Island, we say, let's do another track with Alex and Manu. And um, we did Musica Feliz. Uh, and we, we asked Nisinia, the singer, to, to join us on that project. And because I saw Benoit from Everything But The Girl, the boss of Buzzing Fly label charting Love Island. I sent him a message on his, uh, oh, sorry, my chair. <laughs> on his forum called Lazy Dog. Uh, I sent him a message. I, I thanked him and uh, I said, thank you for the support. And then he, he told me, you know, I'm going to create my own label. So in that time, Buzzing Fly didn't exist. So if you want, uh, I would be happy to have w one of your track on my label. Mm. And Musica Felis was already produced. And I say, I would be happy to send you something. So on the next hour, I sent him the Musica Felis uh, track. And um, the next day, he told me, OK, this is going to be the release number two of Buzzing Fly. So but I didn't realize how big was Benoit. I didn't care. I was so I was only happy that uh, our track is go is gonna be released on the label. But after 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 the release, I just realized that uh, the power of uh, someone that is in the music industry for so long, and I learned a lot uh, alongside uh, this person how to promote uh, uh, the way you release the stuff, the covers, all the stuff like that. It was even organizing the, the party was organizing around the label. Mm. So 
I learned a lot in a few, I can say I save a lot of time on learning about running a label or doing music mm. anyway. Yeah, that's amazing, man. And, um, but then when did you know that uh, this song is everywhere? Uh, I knew when I saw that it was charted on the top 40 on BBC One Radio between uh, between in in between big artists mm. and uh, when you are on the top 40 on BBC One of dance music it means that uh, it's not only a kind of people who listening that to that it means a million of people listening to your song and like it mm. so the that was the first uh, the, the first time i realized but also when ben Watt invited me uh, to play uh, in his club in london called uh, neighborhood oh sorry before neighborhood he, he had a lazy dog so the first time I went to play for the, it was a release party. I played there and uh, I realized that Musica Feliz was huge when uh, when he played. And I say, wow, okay, yeah. <laughs> that means something. <laughs> amazing, amazing. But um, um, how is your, I have to ask you about your relationship with Manu, um, especially yes. like currently, like are you guys still uh, cool with each other? Of course, yeah, yeah. You know, as as I said, we we know each other since ninety ninety four, probably ninety three. I'm not sure. So since we we spent so many time together, we we went uh, we went in so many parties together. We play a lot together, back to back. We love to do in the past uh, to play with six. Uh, vi um, six deck vinyl deck and the uh, two mixer all, uh, all together mm. in different party we yeah we we, we were going in uh, switzerland together with some dj like louis vega uh, tony Humphries, and also we spend a lot of time together in the in the vinyl shop and we almost talk every week we talk almost every week. He, uh, he sent me all his stuff, the music he's working on, the remixes. And I also, I send him my music for him to tell me, what do you think? Uh, what do you feel is missing on the track or, you know? Mm. We, we we always in touch yeah. for so many years now. Nice, nice. We nice. are friends. We, we are very, very good close friends. You yeah, are almost like brothers, uh, if I could say. Yeah, that. we are brothers. Yes. We are brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I want to ask you about your, 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 your career, especially like with regards to the hit songs. You know, we mentioned some of them. Um, okay. If we could go to, let's say, as Rocco alone, you know, the before you had a string of remixes that became hits like which was the first one that really you know surprised you on how big it became mm. as solo probably probably i'm a bit there was two tracks that uh really uh push me a lot three but we're talking about solo not about uh, the band huh? not yes. Rodamal yes we, if you want we can talk about Rodamal after that yes uh, that's Manu Alex and myself uh, for me it was Someday that came out on Realtone uh, and then Memories hmm. but for some f funny reason Memories was produced was produced five years before someday but came out uh one or two years later and uh yes uh someday memories hard time for lovers okay there is so many <laughs> yeah 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 there is there so is. let's start let's start from someday and memories yeah 
Okay. Let's say that's and, yeah, and the first track. I mean, memories like you, I, I've seen, I don't know if it was a video or was I at a party, but like you were in South Africa and, you know, you, you, you played memories, but like the track, I know that it's an emotional track for you, you know, like, um, yeah. um, you know, there's uh, videos of you really crying when, when playing that song and seeing how, how the reaction became from people. Um, what? I would love to find that video. <laughs> where is that video? Man, yeah, <laughs> we, we, we need to, we need to find that. I can't even remember where I saw it, but like for, for such a song, like, and not only with memories and someday, but like to go on and do the many remixes that you did that became so so big especially here in south africa how was your feeling then like i mean like i've had a feeling of having one i mean maybe not maybe more than one but like my my first single as a, as a lsg as an artist that was yes. featuring brian temba all i am was you know fairly in a big a big song in south africa i was playing all, all over yeah. radio and you know managed to get me gigging a lot and that period for me was so amazing you know but i want to know you from somebody who's had songs on songs after songs because every remix that you did after that was a big song it was almost like ah roco <laughs> you don't even need to listen you just buy on Trexos, you know um how was that uh, feeling you. how was that feeling for you uh Probably uh, I was not uh, an opportunist enough. <laughs> I don't know how to explain. <laughs> mm. Now I was, of course, I was very happy and uh, um, the feeling was amazing because I was doing music and I was making a living with that. And uh, the feeling, uh, my feeling was also uh, it's, it's it's strange because you are suddenly you become super uh, busy. I mean, uh, people asking you many 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 stuff. Um, I don't know how to explain. Sorry. Uh, let me start again. <laughs> I'm lost about uh, what I want to say. I mean, uh, no. I mean, when you reach that kind of things. Uh, you need first to organize yourself because you know that you have to deliver many works in the future and uh, and and gigs also uh, happened because also uh, yes you you I made some hits on the remixes but also I know that I'm I'm a good DJ as well I'm a good selector I don't want to lie I mean it's not because it's me <laughs> Of but, course. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're good, you're good. Yeah. Anyway, so the combination of two uh, really made me, uh, it was for me, it's like a dream, you know, and uh, you don't want that, that, uh, that you want that sensation keep going because uh, the more you do, the more you, uh, you meet people, the more you know the the sound going going up you upgrade your your even your mixing and um you uh you meet uh you you meet also big artists mm. and alongside big artists you really grew faster uh than if you were alone you know mm. Mm. true um yeah so i don't know if i if i really answer properly but i mean like uh, i also really want to know um how it felt you know as a as a as a producer like just being in that space of growing and, and meeting people and now you're traveling the, uh, like more parts of the world but now you're also getting more remixes like um i you you explained the greatness of it but i want to understand do you have any uh, did you find any difficulties um, about that period? Mm. In terms of what difficulties? I mean, like, uh, if if 
now suddenly you are getting 20 requests a week for remixes now you need to deliver you know um and uh, you initially were only maybe creating one or two songs or three songs in a month now your your your, your output has to be a bit more it, was there any moment where it was uh, difficult to handle all of the the attention uh i mean uh, the good thing is that um for my gigs for example uh i was with uh with realton agency so lionel marciano was organizing all my gigs and uh for south africa for example he was uh he was uh, doing it with christos Kazaitis. so i didn't have to worry about my gigs you know uh deal I don't have to to think about that because someone was doing it for me. And uh, about music, uh, I was doing a, I mean, more or less a selection because I couldn't accept all requested because every remix I do, I start it like it's a new project for myself. I'm not only okay. Of course, I use my my drum, I use my synth, my keyboard, whatever. But I, every remixes I did, it's like a new project for me. Mm. I'm not. I was not saying just okay. Let me put the vocals on that drum that it's already done. I'm gonna mm. put this and no, never. That's why uh, for any remixes, I only ask the a cappella. Mm. I never use the synth the keyboard, the strings from uh, the original song. Mm. And uh, if uh, the, the, the track uh, did, didn't, uh, uh, if I didn't felt anything with the track, feeling vibration, or uh, how do you say, uh, chicken... Uh, uh, goosebumps. Oh, I forgot. Yes, yeah, goosebumps. Yeah. If the if the I, I don't have the goosebump when I listen the vocal, so I say no, and uh, and also you ha we have to um, to keep in mind something uh, for the, for some projects I was doing uh, myself all the keyboards because I wanted to do uh, I want to produce it more like a underground DJ way. Mm. And when it became uh, more musical, I was using uh, art some musician, mm. like many DJ and producer doing it. Mm. And for, for that, I was using Francois A, uh, the guy who produced with Manu as well, mm. Manu on Buzzing Flight. So I was using uh, also, I'm using Alex Finkin, but anyway, so uh, I couldn't accept uh, uh, remixes with very low fee because i had a minimum of expense to 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 uh to to pay you know mm. i have to pay my musician i have to pay my mixing uh and my time mm. so so it a selection was happening like that you know yeah. more or less yeah but you mentioned something Sorry. as well no no yeah. no don't worry you you mentioned something when you said um uh you were you were not an opportunist enough um during that time what do you mean <laughs> Um, I, what I mean, uh, I mean that someone in my situation would probably, would probably, uh, invest more of, uh, more, uh, I don't know how to say, I could go in a, um, more commercial way on music mm. or, or or take any gigs requested request but we only decided to go on the really the mu the, the parties or the music that i really love mainly mm. of so I was talking about that more or less. So yeah. Do you, uh, don't take. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You say. 
Yeah, me, I do music for, for the love of what, for the love and the respect. I mean, because uh, I believe on my music and I, 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 my music is with a lot of emotion. So I can go and play in a place if there is no emotion or people, they don't have the love for what I do, you mm, know? Mm, no, I feel you. I feel you. And um, I, I have... I have to ask you about um, because after doing that many big songs and and big remixes, um, did you have pressure to always be doing something bigger and and better? Like because I mean, like if you if you do a string of remixes like you did, and most of them were like hit songs, um, has that especially now as a, as a musician? Does that still um, uh, affect you mentally to want to do better than what you did before? No, um, no, because you know when you do music and you produce, and uh, as artists you always want to do better than the than the one before. Mm. You're always searching for a new sound uh, or a new mixing. You anyway, you upgrade yourself. Mm. When I listen my my music production from 1999 and now, it's a there is a big move, even on the mixing. Mm. So um, yeah, I think uh, unconscious in my in my in my head probably I don't know, but the, that process is there. Mm. But I don't think too much about that. But something uh, something sure is that the music change. There is some uh, modernity. Is it the right word? Yes. <laughs> you know, new sound, uh, new mixing, uh, which uh, I'm always curious to to see how the people goes to reach that result on the mixing. And uh, I listen also a lot of uh, producer, and uh, uh, I listen a lot of music that is not on my uh, genre mm -hmm. of what I produce. I love to listen more a lot of techno producer, for example, mm -hmm. because I love the quality of the mixing. The the result is massive, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try to understand how they do this, you know. Yes. And I try to put it on my on my mix. I hear you. Yeah. I mean, like that's one way to <laughs> to kind of learn new things and and introduce new things into your music. You know, just by listening to other people and hear what they do. And you know, like sometimes you're like, okay, this can live within my music. Um, who are some of the people that you that you listen to? Uh, I like uh, the German producer called DJ Kotze. Yeah. DJ Koz for French people. <laughs> yeah. I will always list. <laughs> I will always listen to Louis Vega, of course. He's. I didn't mention him before, but because you are only ask, asking me who introduced me to house music, but later on, uh, when I discovered the Masters at Work production. Uh, I never left their releases or their music production. And Louis Vega, as the producer with Kenny Dope, they are genius. And as a DJ, is one of the best coming. Yeah. And uh, so yes, Louis Vega at jazz is amazing producer, amazing, amazing DJ. Um, ooh, there is André Lodeman. Mm. Uh, phew, there is so many that uh, I, w I was I was not prepared about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay, it's okay. I mean, like I I like no. it when when it's not like unprepared, you yeah. know. So that whoever comes to mind comes to mind, and whoever doesn't, it's okay, you know. Like no 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 hard feelings. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to mention everyone, you know. Ralph Kam will understand. Um, uh, I wanna say um ask you about um. French house and, and French house music producers, you know, and the scene in France 
Um, how would you describe the house music scene in France right now? I mean, like, obviously, right now we're under COVID-19. Everybody's on lockdown. But before the lockdown, how was the scene in France? Um, in my city, in Lyon, uh, we are lucky to have a festival called Nuit Sonore. Like the big tune called Nuit Sonore. Mm. The track that Vini Da Vinci play. He made me discovered. Uh, I think, anyway, so Nuit Sonore is a festival. And uh, even before uh, Lyon was a, a melting pot of, uh, of, uh, of many parties, mainly techno music. Mm. So we have a lot of uh, techno music party, but also uh, Later, the last 10 years, uh, it was there, there was a big uh, uh, aim. No, not aim, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm mixing the words. Um, oh, it's freezing. Hello, hello. No, um, I'm with you. Ah, we are back. We are back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there was a there was a return of the 90s production. So for the last 10 years, uh, we, we had a lot of uh, uh, party and uh, about uh, classic, classic of house music, mm. and um, also we have a, a big wave of Afro, Afro house music, mm. and let's say Afro tech, mm. and uh, we can say that uh, Black Coffee, Kulo de Song, Temba, uh, or Shimza. Uh, they also help that vibe, that wave to be recognized all over the world now. Mm. So it hit, it hit it also my city. And um, of course, uh, it also started with kind of music in Germany, or uh, with uh, Inner Vision and Henrik Schwartz, also Dixon, Am, well because they were big, uh, big supporter and they, they were also, they were the, I don't want to lie, but probably they were the first to release that kind of music. Mm. So let's say there is a big, a big, uh, a big base for house music techno, a little bit for Afro, Afro tech, mm. deep house also, we have a deep house scene. But mainly, let's say it's house and techno. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. Uh, will we see you um, doing more stuff that is uh, techie? Sorry, sorry. Are we gonna hear um, uh, Rocco production doing? I mean, Rocco doing uh, a more techno production. Yeah, you know, to I I always. Uh, put uh, a piece of techie touch on my music because uh, when I was younger, I was also a techno DJ. In the same time, I was uh, introduced to house music. I discovered techno music from Detroit, Chicago, uh, I mean, for America, but also from Germany, mm. from Netherlands. I was discovering music, even though we have a big uh, French producer and DJ like for example Laurent Garnier is the Laurent Garnier is the is the is the French house and techno uh, head in pioneer in, in France so I also learn a lot uh, listening to him so of course my music got influenced by that and uh, I will always put some techy touch on my music. <laughs> yeah, and I love it, man. I love it so much. I mean, I remember when you released the uh, um, discotheque, uh, you know, yeah. and uh, you did the, the remix that you did for for Ralph Kam, All This Love For You. He still plays it now yeah. and people still go crazy, you know, like <laughs> that song is, yeah, no, it, it really, it's, it, it's powerful. It's strong, you know, it really does hit. Um, and just talking about getting into South Africa, right? Like, um, you've been, you, you've seen your name growing here locally and you come regularly as well. What is your 
your feeling just in general about about the South African house music scene? Uh, I saw a big move uh, since I arrived for the first time in 2009 or I don't if it was eight or nine. Since 2009, let's say nine till now, uh, the house music, the, 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 the South African scene really uh, grow quicker than quicker than any other country all over the world. It was crazy. I'm very impressed how guys you uh, learn and produce music so fast now, because let's say 10 years ago, we, you, you had, you had mainly, okay, big producer, pioneer of house music inside, if I'm not wrong, and slowly guys like you, uh, Kulo, or uh, Shaima music, uh, if I'm talking about deep house music and, uh, and appear. And then I was so impressed about, uh, uh, how fast you learn and you, you found your own sound and the, the quality that you put into the production. And for me, uh, the South African scene is something, uh, yeah, I can say, uh, you are, you, you are, you are good enough to, 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 re to be, uh, represented all over the world. Wow. Man. And, uh, yes, yes. And, uh, I'm very impressed by the, the, the new generation now, uh, from South Africa, because, you know, I receive a lot of, uh, promos and of course I can't listen everything, but when I got time, if I don't answer to anybody, uh, later on, I will put my head into the links and I listen mm. and there is a lot of very good music quality. Mm -hmm. in that uh in in south africa i i agree i agree with that bro and um um just with regards to south africa i'm i'm very much also impressed with the amount of new music and new producers you know because um it just shows that how the passion in the country like the passion for house music in south africa can only grow as young more young people are getting into the scene and we are seeing that and and like you say i'm more happy about the quality too you know like the people like fka mesh um, i don't know if you've heard of him jezuel is, is another person as well yeah course. i mean the couple has been doing it for years almost as long as i like have you know yeah and 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 so many other great uh, artists are coming through with with great releases and i think um our scene will grow but i want to ask you about you know i know we've spoken about it before me and you you know like that you come here um, a lot as a producer and sometimes you feel like you don't know how else to contribute into the scene what else you could do um do you still are, are you still feeling um the same about you and south africa a little bit but I start a process to uh, uh, to to, uh, to do a kind of tribute to South African producer through my label, for example. But my label is very small for now. And uh, but what I did and Ajaz did it before me a long time ago. But I I uh, I, I have an idea is to do. Uh, is to do a compilation with uh, Rocco Rodamal uh, featuring a South African all-star, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, my goal is to uh, is to uh, is to share a South African producer music uh, through my uh, through my uh, let's say uh, my name mm -hmm. because uh, I'm lucky to be. Uh, known enough to spread and help that scene mm. all over the world. And uh, for example, I 
I, I put Enunapa uh, on the remix of uh, Working Hard. It was a tribute he did to me, but I was so happy to put him on Memories, for example. And uh, this, this started slowly like that, you know, and uh, I want to continue that uh, in the future. Yeah. So, and also during the COVID, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I tried to, uh, to do some live streaming uh, through B BET, for example, with Half God. Mm. And also, uh, I did a show to help uh, to raise money from the uh, via Christos show to 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 help uh, artists from South Africa to to, to win some money. Mm. In different any things I can do, uh, I will try. I will yeah. try. And and uh, I I love that brother, especially about the the Inunapa story, you know, because I remember seeing a video um you guys were playing while well, you were playing in durban at um, mm. uh, the uh, mbuso music men's uh, party uh, i can't remember the name um, of the party now uh, i forgot the name oh, but yes uh, uh, tone society tone society yeah tone society yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, you were playing there and, and you played the remix that ino napa did for you you called him on stage and he was rocking yeah it, i was looking <laughs> yeah yeah i love that so much because um for me, brother, like I've always known how humble you are as a person, but you know, for Thank other you. people to see you calling a young guy up on stage during your own set and just letting him be, you know, and giving him uh, the shine, I, I thought it was a, a special touch that you did. So big ups to you for that, bro. Like, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. It, it oh, thank you. But you know, it's Enunapa remix. It's not my. It's his touch, it's his sound. So, mm. of course, he did the remix of Working Hard, but 80 percent of the track is him. So, mm. I have to give him back what it's not. It's, I know it's, it's few for me, but means a lot for others. But mm. uh, it's, it's the minimum I can do. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, I didn't calculate anything. I just, I was just feeling that. I play the song, but where's the guy who produces it? Yeah. He need to play himself and enjoy himself. I yeah, <laughs> amazing. I love that, but and I love that sensation because I, I feel that it's amazing. To, it to is. Care. It it's is. A, it's, it's, it's yeah. It's a moment that we 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 need to share. Music is to share. It's not about it's not about yourself, me, mm. myself, and I. Fuck off. Yeah. Sorry for the words. <laughs> no worries. It's an internet show. You can say whatever you want. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, but I, I want to get to uh, ask you about difficult moments with regards to being an artist, especially when you think about financial issues. You know, um, what has been some of the most difficult financial moments of your life? Um, I the most difficult machine in my life. Uh, it happens to me in ninety in two thousand, probably. From like uh, nineteen ninety four till uh, let's say nineteen ninety nine, I was busy playing as DJ in every club. I was not traveling yet because I was local DJ I mean, in my city. And then time, time, time fly, you enjoy yourself, but you just, you just forgot, forget to, uh, that music change and the club scene change. And suddenly you, you say, oh, what's going on? No more calls, no book, no more bookings. So in 1999, I uh, I stopped DJing, and uh, I I mean I stopped DJing. I had no more no any no one gig. Uh, I don't have any more residency, and uh, I was selling my vinyl collection. Hmm. I I had uh, four vinyl uh, turntable. I was sell I sold all my stuff because I don't have any I don't have any more money to to pay my bills. Mm. So I even sold my uh, 
my music uh, my music stuff i have uh, a tb303 roland mm. i sold it uh, i was anyway so that was a very very bad bad time for me i remember mm. so what happened i uh, i went to work in a factory at night and uh, i was do i was doing some uh, engine piece engine for piece for the for the cars you know mm. so i was i was uh, working from 10 p.m till 6 a.m and uh, the first <laughs> the first month it was very hard for me i was even crying why how i get there what's happened why i'm not dj anymore uh, Mm. So you learn from that, and but anyway, I took my time. I made some money by have a, a regular uh, a day job. Mm. I mean, it was at night, but let's say a regularly job. Mm. It helped me to get back. And uh, in two thousand, also, I had a friend who who remember me from the from the from the good times. This friend, he moved to Portugal, and uh, in 2000, he was searching about me. In that time, you know, not everyone have mobiles or whatever. Anyway, he was looking at me in, in my city in Lyon, and uh, we met in a party on a Sunday. He was asking me, what are you doing? I say, I'm doing nothing. Mm. I'm, I'm not DJing anymore. He, t he told me, are you ready to, to go with me in Portugal? I say, he, he, he told me, I opened a, a place, uh, a bar in Lille. You can play there if you want. I say, okay. And uh, so this is the really begin of Rodamal. Mm. I went there for one month and a half. And then I got back. And also, uh, so yes, that that was a bad time. I don't know what was the question, sorry. Say no, it again. no, no, no. Uh, you already answered it because I was asking you about the, the difficult um, financial times, you know. Um, do you remember the yeah. your, your friend uh, from Portugal, his name or her name? Alex Santos. Oh, David, David, David. David. David, Sant David uh, yeah, David Grafmuet. I mean, for people to know, at the beginning, Rodamal, it was the four people. Rodamal is the two first letters of Rocco or Ro, D A for David, M A for Manu, A L for Alex Santos. So it's how we create the names. How I create the name. Sorry, I I, I won't be humble on that. <laughs> I I found the name. I create the name. So yes. Um, so uh, because David invited me. Uh, there and a year after he asked me Rocco I have a new project I want to build a club but I want you to be a resident DJ there so he told me are you ready to move there in that time I was uh, with my actual wife it was just the begin and uh, my, I was still down in music you know I was still nothing happening to me and uh, she told me, you know what, I'm going to quit my job for you. And we go I'm going to spend two years of my time just for you to get back on the music scene as a DJ and producer. Hmm. So uh, because we went, because I went to Portugal and I met, uh, I went to play for my friend David. David have a, had the resident DJ who was Alex Santos. We met together. A year after we celebrate the opening of the new place, I invited Manu. It's how we got all together. And um, after the, the celebrating uh, the, the party, the opening party, hmm. we were supposed to get back in Lyon with Manu, but we missed the flight. So because we missed the flight, we got back at David's place. And instead of doing nothing with David, Manu and Alex, we did Love Island in the basement of, of, uh, of David's house. 
wow. with one PC and uh, Reason, uh, the, the first version of Reason. Wow, wow. Yeah, I had, the, I had the album of Jill Scott. And uh, we, we used samples from Jill Scott's uh, track called He Loves Me. Yes. So it's how we did, it's how we did uh, Love Island. Wow, <laughs> Damn, bro. that's amazing. And, and I mean, you're still uh, a big fan of using Reason, right? Yeah, I'm on the, it's a version 11 now. Yeah. The first one was 1.0 and uh, yeah, now it's the 11 version. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, I, I remember I used Reason 4 for the longest of time. And when I was telling you, you like, dude, just upgrade to the latest Reason. So I, I'm still on 10 now. Um, I haven't gotten to 11 yet, you know, because I'm starting to move away from from reason and now I'm only really using it for my drum programming but most yeah. of my production yeah, yeah. Um, I use it on uh, yeah I Logic. I mean I use reason uh, I was also using reason like a slave program because I use a lot of uh, Cubase for many years mm. and uh, I'm gonna be back on it because uh, once I had a chat with uh, Opolopo mm. When we were in uh, in Spain together, we were playing for uh, a festival called Vocal Booth or Booth. I don't know what you say. And uh, we were talking about uh, music program, and he told me that the new uh, Cubase is amazing. That he's using it a lot, but Opolopo Opolo is using also a lot of keyboard. He's a real musician, you know. Mm -hmm. But he, advi he, advise, he advises me to. Uh, to get back on it if I got the, the chance. So I'm really thinking also to to use Cubase again. Yeah, I, I, I hope with that reason. You, if you can just advise Ralph to upgrade to the latest. Ralph is on Cubase 5 and that's like okay. a while ago, you know, like I've been telling you, brother, just upgrade the damn thing, get a new computer, get a new software, you know. <laughs> but, but I guess whatever works for you works, you know, like uh, he, he's still doing great music. No, I mean, it you can have the the first version and uh Ralph gum is doing an amazing job the mix the album mixing they are, they are dope yeah you know super super the definitely. sound is big is huge it's clear it's amazing mm. so as far you feel comfortable with yourself go keep going for sure but, but for sure uh, and it's strange because i mean it's not strange Ralph gum he told me or he say in an interview uh he always no we exchange one uh he told me uh change is good so don't be afraid to change you know uh modernity uh, <laughs> yes. so i think it's uh it's something that he is okay for that <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, I'm, I'm i'm definitely gonna keep on trying to pursue him because the thing is like you know you can't even install new plugins so you you kind of stuck to whatever that you have you know but i mean it works for him like we say if it works for you it works for you and that's fine um yeah and probably he create his own presets you know yeah so, yeah true like yeah. i i did also on cubase in the time in the past i create my own preset my own eq with the ssl uh ssl uh, mix uh, line mixer so and to be honest i compare my music production when while I was using Cubase and uh, Reason and Solo and to be honest on when I was using Cubase also my mixing was bigger and stronger mm. but now the, the latest version of Cubase allow you to have a very decent mix mm. Mm. that's no. it we close it. <laughs> uh, let me ask you about our, about being a musician. Um, what are you mostly happy about um, with regards to, to being a musician? Uh, what I'm the most that I'm happy is to uh, is that I have the liberty, the, the freedom, yeah, the liberty yeah, mm. of uh, uh, express myself and give my background into 
in, into my sound because uh, I love uh, I love to use samples because you know uh, I'm DJ first before being a producer. Mm. I'm DJ for thirty years and now uh, and and di- and producer for twenty years. So as a DJ. Uh, the, the 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 power of DJ and especially in the hip hop is to use samples from uh, new music or background music, you know, from funky stuff or whatever. So, uh, so I love to to sample. You know, this is Trumps from funky stuff. Uh, okay, this is Daniel Roche, but anyway. Uh, so yes, I love to go through the vinyl. And listen the stuff, and sample it. And this is, this is the. Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. This is the the extension of the DJ, mm. and uh, yeah, the what I like to be a musician is to is to to to, to deliver uh, your emotion. Let's say that your emotion and some. It's not clearly said. But me, when I use samples, it's because it reminds me a period of my when I was kids or whatever. So I put it yeah. in my music. People don't know that, but for me, it means a lot. Yeah, it's like it's a, it's like a book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I love that so much. Um, you uh i, I want to ask you about the stuff that you're working on you told me that you're working on a lot of other stuff but one that you have yeah. opened right now is the remix that you're doing for edges um firstly tell us a bit about it and maybe play us a sample yeah uh i mean a jazz is is uh is i don't know if he's doing it now he's releasing um he want to release on vinyl or and digital as well his back catalog and uh, he he asked me if I want to uh, to to choose on a list uh, track that I would love to remix. And I say, okay, there is two tracks that I want to remix. <laughs> it's called uh, it's one called Everyone, and another one called Everything, uh-huh. because there's two tracks they are connected anywhere. So, uh, so you say, yeah, do whatever you want because you know we are, we are friends with that jazz. He helped me a lot, also, mm. on the mixing. He's doing my mastering for my music. Sometimes he's helping me. He's doing me some keyboards. Mm. Really few because he's he's a super busy guy, yeah. <laughs> man. And uh, I love his studio. I never been there yet, but I would love to to be with him in studio. We were supposed to be together now, actually. Okay. Now, while I'm talking with you, we were su- supposed to be in studio for three or four days all together. Oh, damn. Seriously. Yes, we were. Oh, we yeah. had a project. We had a plan to, to work together and, on music production. Hmm. So, so I said, OK, let me try uh, everyone, everything. So the, the track I did is everything. And the, the name of the remix, it's Rocco Rodamal, Chaos on Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> because I, yeah, because I used uh, elements from the two tracks. And because it was the COVID, when I finalize it, that's why I call it like that. Mm, okay, nice. I, I so, can't wait. Let's check it out. Sorry? I'm saying... You want to check it out? Yeah. 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 Can, we, can we listen a I bit? Hope I hope you can let me know if you need most level on the sound. The original mix. The original mix was was starting without drum kick. But I had it a kick in case some DJ need to mix it properly. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So I put down, I mute the kick, but I'm going to put it back. 
And what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to skip it a little bit. Yes, please. Volume is okay. I can't wait to hear right. this, bro. I, I really can't wait to hear. Um, do you know when, it, yeah. when he's going to release it? I sent him what you are listening now. I sent him yesterday. Okay. The final mix, so I hope in one month. I don't know. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, we'll we, see. We, did, we didn't talk again together about that. So, yeah, uh, I'm working on this. Um, also, uh, yeah, uh, I have another. I'm doing a remix for Frank Roger. Nice. Uh, but I have that project also. It's a, I, I'm doing a cover of Temptation, the the soul funk band from the eighties. Yeah. So it sounds a bit like that. I'm gonna skip it. Yes. The pure of your focus. Is this gonna be on uh, on on uh, real tone? Memories, my label. Nice, nice. My, nice. This is this is the my, this is my track called um, "Treated Like a Lady." It's a cover of Temptation. Mm. Um, the one, the one on real tone is gonna it's uh, it's this one. I show you. It's gonna take few times to be done uh, ah where is it that where is that where is that jovan jovan oh is that one it's gonna be quick <laughs> i'm i'm really looking forward to that cover man uh, so did, did, ah, the, did you um, record new vocals or you just use the the old ones it's new no 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 it's, it's a cover so a cover it's a new vocal it's yeah. It's sung by another person. Okay, cool. Who's singing? Yeah. Who's singing one day? Sorry. Who's the singer? Is a non guy. Is a non guy. Is a is a guy is working in a studio for another friend. So he's not gonna be featured on the track. Oh, okay. I see. I see. But uh, yeah, and this is the. This is my remix, my remix for uh, Frank, for Realton. Remember the game. 
I like the vibe. Is this I go to the break. She has this track. Remember that? I go to the break. All of a sudden, you say, what I did to the break, sorry. <laughs> and then I, what I did to the break, I say, when he said, I want to play uh, that classic track. Do you remember that? Mm. So what I did, I, I put in the break a very classic song of Basil. Mm. It's, it's really nice. You see Frank Brown on the set. All of a sudden you hear this jazzy track. Remember that? Remember just walking into a club and you just say, hey, this is where it's at. This is what I want to do. Go get your drink on. Nice. So, yeah. I remember the, 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 the original. I think I've got the vinyl of the original, actually. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So it's they... called uh, Frank. Frank Roger featuring the Joe Vaughn, uh Remember. Remember, yes, yes, yes. Um, yes so he's re-releasing this. This is amazing, man. Dope. Yeah, with uh, yes, with this remix and uh, probably another remix I did, and other people did remix as well. Nice, yeah. nice, cool, bro. Um, before before we finish, I want to ask you because about food. Um, because, food. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, I, I've heard that, like, um, from somebody, I wouldn't say who, but that you are one of the big killers of food when you are here in South Africa. Sorry, sorry? When you are here in SA, when you're visiting, um, someone told yeah. me you are, you are one of the, the killers of food. You you just, you made everything. Yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh you know, I, I like to cook and I cook every day in my house. And uh, I mean, uh, I like to discover new flavor. I, I like pop. Uh, I like the uh, grilled chicken, simple things, you know. Mm. And uh, also, when, after, when I go to play and we had a long night, how difficult it is to find food after that? <laughs> you always have a McDonald's or whatever. So what I do, I say, guys, when I'm in the gig, please do me a takeaway of food for my, for the, for up for the after show. Yeah, for the room. <laughs> for, the, for the room. Yeah. For the room. I and I check my series. So I'm very happy. <laughs> Simple thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, bro. Yeah. Anyway, no, Rocco, I'm I'm really happy that you 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 took some time to to sit with me and and have a chat, brother. I I really appreciate you as a person. Thank you so much. I think you are one of the nicest people that I've ever met, you know. And and um, but also just w with regards to your own music, you know, the music that you've done, that you've gifted into our scene. I'm I'm really I'm truly grateful for that. And uh, I wish no, you thank you. I wish you more hits, brother. I wish like more and more hits. I wish for, for, for us all, and uh, no, uh, you know, uh, thank you for your word, but uh, also I keep in mind that uh, for me, it was, a, uh, it was lucky for me to, to discover South Africa because I never e expect such a love for my music and without South Africa, probably I won't be here to do what I love to do, to be honest, mm. to be honest. Right. So thank you so much. No. And my love for South Africa will be the same. Sure. Still. <laughs> sure, brother. No, Still. thank you. Thank you. So I'm very, I'm very excited to, to do the next. The next step for me is to give back what South Africa gave to me. It's the minimum that, uh, that the minimum that I can do. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and thank you so much for that. Um, but um, for everybody who's watching the show, thank you so much for watching the show. Thank you. Thank um, you so much, guys. Yes, yes. And and please, please uh, tag somebody who, who might learn from the, the conversation in the comment section. And um, please share the video as well so that more and more people can see it. If you're watching from Rocco's page, 
come through to my page yeah. as well say lsg and like this page um but thank we you will so do. much i will do <laughs> <laughs> cool thank you for watching and uh guys let's remember to stay creative peace out